So one of the things we ask is, what's the relation between these stages of development and states that you can get into? And again, there's a simple kind of rule there. States are free, stages are earned. So you can get in an altered state, you can get in a meditative state, you can put these earphones on and get into a brain state, which we'll come back to um, very in, momentarily. And you can be plunged into a whole range of states precisely because they're ever present. We have waking, dream, deep sleep, peak experiences, altered states, and so on. Most of them are available fairly quickly. What we found is that the more you are plunged into a state, an altered state, that is bigger than you are, that is, whoa, what was that, that you can't interpret. It can be luminous, it can be profound, it can be breathtaking, it can be, oh my God, some people have it just looking at the Grand Canyon, some people have it making love, some people have it listening to music. Whenever and people have it in meditation, once that happens, it acts to dislodge your just a little bit your identification with whatever stage you're at. It just loosens it up a little bit because something bigger just swept through you, kind of loosened the hinges a little bit. So every altered state that's bigger than you are at the moment is a micro transformative event. Probably that's why meditation is so effective in transformation and probably why other things haven't been scientifically demonstrated is you don't do it often enough. In other words, shamanic drumming might help, but if you only do it once a month, mm, not going to work. Meditation usually is once or twice a day, so it's an altered state, once or twice a day, once or twice a day, once or twice a day, really kind of forcing that to happen. Now if you look at the four quadrants, then what we have in the upper right quadrant is one of the ways we summarize the perspectives. It's basically the objective parts of you that science would recognize that you can see in a third person objective stance. So it's the brain and the brain stem and the hemispheres. And the brain produces different states, physiological brain states, like alpha states, beta, theta, delta, and so on. Traditionally, the great wisdom traditions maintain that waking, dream, and deep sleep states of consciousness are correlated with gross, subtle, and causal realities. In other words, they actually are, are associated with some very deep phenomena in your own being. Western science has found that waking state has predominantly a type of brain state known as alpha and beta, that the dream state predominantly has theta, and deep formless sleep predominantly delta waves. So what we found is that you can take some of these brain-mind technologies, strap the little thing on your head, it can be holosync or any number of things, and induce these brain states. You can induce a theta state. And when you do that, people will often start to have dream-like reverie in the upper left quadrant. And on occasion, you can get them into deep delta states, and then they'll have an experience of vast, empty formlessness. So what happens is, indirectly what's happening when you use some of these brain-mind technologies and they're a little bit effective but not a whole lot effective. They're things they don't do and we'll come back to this. But the reason it works is when you induce these brain states in the upper right, everything in the quadrants are correlated. So you induce a similar state of consciousness in the upper left. And you experience this at a kind of a waking or a dream or a deep sleep state, almost meditative state of consciousness. So you are being plunged into an altered state. And the more you're plunged into an altered state, the more it helps you move through the stages. The more it slightly accelerates your movement through the stages. No stages are skipped. We have a lot of evidence on that. But you can sort of um, you know, put a few drops of oil on the old spiral and it makes it a little slipperier. There are several things they don't do. And this also very closely relates to several things that meditation doesn't do. But in particular, they're not going to get at any psychodynamic issues because you actually have to go after shadow elements with a very specific type of technique. And if you don't, what happens is the states just kind of bypass them. And so, and sometimes they get worse. And states of consciousness are sort of making parts of you strong and they're making your shadow stronger too. You know, so, so you come out in certain ways nice and more relaxed, and in other ways that twitch is getting just a little bit bigger. Um, it won't provide you with the context of wisdom. 
And that's why you have to have a cognitive interpretation that goes along with meditative states. Most of the really great contemplative traditions have, you know, this whole notion of anti-intellectualism is a boomeritis production. All of the great wisdom traditions emphasize intellectual understanding at going hand in hand with experiential meditation. Sometimes they even give it a bigger uh, emphasis because intellect comes from the root word B-U-D-D-H-I and all Buddhas are drawing on intellect in the very highest sense meaning clarity of awareness and cognition. So that is not going to happen by just being plunged into meditative states or just counting your breath or just putting on a headphone. You actually have to come out and have a philosophy that helps interpret your experience. And so, or it won't stick. It just doesn't stick very well. And this is one of the hard, hard lessons we've learned in the last 30 years from the human potential movement. You can go in, you can have the great experiential explosion. Three weeks later, it's gone. Four weeks after that, you're more depressed than when you went in. So, but if you hold it in an integral framework, not only do they stick, you have a way to relate it to other areas. And so we're finding that, that we can, in a sense, revitalize the human potential movement by putting in a larger picture and using a lot of these techniques to carry it forward.